Hello and welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast, our next team season preview. And this time, it's a turn of the Carolina Panthers. Now with me, I've got a returning guest, well known as our Panthers fan on the podcast, Newcastle fan as well. Back with me today is Keg from both Panthers Magpie and also the Magpie channel. Keg, pleasure to have you on. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm very well, thank you. Not so much looking forward to talking Carolina Panthers football these days. Um... After last year's performance, but yeah, I'm on three years in a row, so thank you very much for having me on. Kind of looking forward to getting started, so getting back into it after this long off-season. Only well, a couple of months, like what, 50 days or something like that left to, to go. So yeah, it's getting close, man. I'm getting excited. It's um, you know, anyone who watched the last episode with the Chargers would have, may have noticed that I wore something LA dependent. You know, I, I wore my Lakers top because I thought LA and all that. You know, I've got something LA based, I'll wear it. And I've got one... Carolina jumper, but it's so hot today. <laughs> yeah, it's a warm day today. Like I need to shut that blind behind because the the screen at the back it's not very good. But it's like a blackout blind. It's really really hot. Like, it's, it's not very good. So yeah, the sooner we can kind of get this done, the better. Because I'm sweating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's roasting. I've just been at work all day, and yeah, just getting on the journey home was just horrendously hot and. Yeah, it's nice to be in shorts rather than a shirt and trousers. Makes a nice yeah. um, <laughs> makes a nice difference. And actually, I'll touch on before we go on the ins and outs. You mentioned then you weren't looking forward to maybe the season, but after what happened last year, it's almost a sense of well, I can't get any worse than what happened last year. Yeah, absolutely. I really, really can't. Uh, I, I don't know how much it's going to improve. Hopefully somewhat at, at the very very least uh because we've made a lot of off-season moves obviously i think coaching staff was a lot to do with it i think trying to get bryce young in the best position with some of the like offensive line and receiver acquisitions that we've made over the past few months but yeah well well i'm sure we'll get into all that soon but with the likes of dave canales and the the money spent on the offensive line trading and drafting for a receiver we're trying to put bryce in the best situation possible so yeah last year was abysmal absolutely just the, the worst of, of my tenure as a Panthers fan, like this is one of the top three worst years that we've ever had, could argue that it was number one, uh, especially when you put into the fact that we didn't get the number one overall pick because of the trade last year, just made it that little bit more sour. Um, so yeah, it was just an awful, awful season. So you're right, the only way is up. And if that means three wins at the very, very least, then that's some progression at least, isn't it? So obviously no one wants to look at three four wins is a, is a good season but in our case four wins double the amount of last year might not even be the worst thing so yeah it's just one of them just kind of got to see how it goes yeah exactly exactly you mentioned offensive line help there one of your ins include robert hunt who joined for my team the dolphins for a staggering i believe a hundred million dollar deal which yeah could, five yeah hundred million could be a questionable acquisition in terms of the money. Um, I, I liked him, but whether he was worth that, I don't know. Uh, you also got in via a trade, Deontay Johnson, the wide receiver out of Pittsburgh in a trade, plus a pick, uh, along with cornerback Deontay Johnson going the other way. Uh, Yeto Gross Matos has made the move to the 49ers, as well as uh, other players leaving, such as the Visca Chenault. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, I got that completely wrong. He was out, but other ends include the Visca Chenault, Jadavian Clowney, Clavon Chason and Josie Jewell, re-signing Derek Brown as well. And then out include Bruce Matos, um, Von Bell, Camu Gruja Hill, Jeremy Chin, TJ Henderson, and DJ Chark. And in the draft, you took in the uh, first round via a trade um, with the Chiefs via Buffalo, Xavier Leggett, the receiver out of South Carolina. Other main Headline draft picks include running back Jonathan Brooks out of Texas, 46th overall, as well as Kentucky linebacker Trevin Wallace, 72nd overall, um, Jadamion Sanders out of Texas, tight end, 101st overall, and later on in the draft, in the fifth round, Chow Smith Wade, in the sixth round, Jaden Crimedi, and in the seventh round, Michael Barrett. Overall for you, Keg, your take on your team's offseason as a whole. Uh, well, yeah, pretty good in that aspect. As we've touched upon, the the season as a whole, twenty twenty three, was just b- beyond our wildest dreams of how bad it was. Because there was actually some positivity going into it, and I know even you, you might not like to admit it, but you predicted the NFC South winners would be the Panthers. I did, uh, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm sure a lot of people did. I think maybe's um, 
uh, I've put his name so far at the back of my head. I'm forgetting it. Frank Reich, I think that was it. Uh, because of Frank Reich, he was maybe the only red flag. But, you know, everyone else, like the, the, the coaching staff, Everything that he was putting together, we finally got the quarterback that we wanted. The, the O line wasn't too bad in twenty twenty three, so in twenty twenty two, sorry. So everything was starting to gel. Everything was starting to come together, but it just fell off a cliff. Uh, I, I don't even. Uh, well, I was going to say I don't know what happened, but I do. It was Frank Reich, it was Scott Fitterer, and it was David Tepper. They're the, they're the main reasons why we plummeted. Uh, but yeah, they all lost their jobs. Frank Reich, obviously, uh, midway through last season. Um, Scott Fitterer at the end of the season. Obviously, there's not really much we can do about David Tepper. Um, but yeah, we, we made some quick moves. We've got a new GM, Dan Morgan, former linebacker of the Panthers, and a new head coach, offensive guru, quarterback risker in Dave Canales. Uh, and then straight away into free agency within the first, I think it was the first day, we spent 153 million on the offensive line. So yeah, 100 million, uh, five year contract for uh, Robert Lewis, uh, for, uh, Robert Hunt. Then Damian Lewis came in on a four-year deal for $53 million. Uh, so, yeah, $153 million spent first day of, uh, <laughs> of the free agency. Uh, but that, that we've obviously identified the need uh, because it was the interior that let us down last year, mainly through injuries. It wasn't necessarily anybody particular's fault. Um, but Bradley Bozeman at centre, Iggy Kwanu at left tackle, didn't have the best of years, and they were consistent through injury at least. But it was the guards just... Injury after injury, rotation after rotation. The next one up was as bad as the last one. Uh, once one got injured, like you don't like to see players get injured, but the guards that were had were so bad. It was like, that's not the worst thing in the world. Get them out, get the next guy in. But he was just as bad. So <laughs> it was awful. So yeah, straight away, we've spent a lot of money. Uh, and you, you touched upon the value of Robert Hunt. And yes, it probably was overpaid, but because it was that much of a need, and he probably was one of the best guards available in free agency. So he probably had a lot of offers. So we probably had to bid a lot of people out of it. Uh, so that's probably why we spent that much money. Yes, you could question the value. But to us, we felt that it was worth it. Pay it over the odds. Get the best guy available. Get him in. Protect your quarterback. Um, maybe it's the same for Lewis Hunt. Four year, 53 million. Is that worth it? Maybe. I don't know. Probably, again, overspent a little bit because he was up there and also got a chemistry with Dave Canales from Seattle. Um, but the, the, the draft, I think we've done quite well. Uh, going back again, sorry, John A. Johnson, getting him for practically nothing. Yes, it would give a player, but it was a player who was going to go out of... Uh, we're gonna was going to get cut anyway. John A. Johnson, he was getting ready for the chopping block. Uh, we thought he was going to go last year, to be honest, but uh, he stayed for another year and had a pretty good year. But I think with the, the contract and the salary cap information, he was going to be a cut. Like We had to get rid of him to free up some salary cap. So instead, we used him as draft capital, got in a, a bit of a money ball signing in Deontay Johnson in the sense that he's not the best receiver in the league. He's probably not even top 10. But it, the, the money ball aspect is he is statistically one of the best receivers in the league since he was drafted at getting open creating separation, route running. He is one of the best in the league. If not one, he's top three, without a doubt. He needs to work on some other bits, like like catching and whatnot, but that's why it's money ball. Like it's statistically a tremendous signing. Gave nothing away. A player that was going to get cut, plus a late draft pick. I think it was like a sixth or a seventh or something like that. Not a lot. Um, so yeah, that was one of our biggest problems, with particularly with the receivers last season. They just could not get open. Thielen was the only one at 34, 33 years of age, over 100 receptions, over 1,000 yards. That's not why he was brought in. Uh, so it's quite embarrassing that he was our main guy. Uh, and it took teams long enough to figure out that he was the only option. Uh, so yeah, I thought teams might figure that out and double cover him sooner. But it wasn't until about midway through the season that I actually thought, Ah, oh, yeah, maybe we should double cover this guy because he's literally the only guy who can catch a ball. Um, so, yeah, we're just knocking Thielen down the list a bit, getting Deontay Johnson, an expert route runner, expert at separation. That's huge. That is key. Uh, then going into the draft, Xavier Liget. Uh, it's Liget. Uh, that was a, a conversation among Panthers fans because uh, Roger Goodell pronounced it Liget, and everyone laughed at him, saying that it was wrong. Uh, then the, the press conference the day afterwards with Xavier Liget. He did actually say that's actually right because, yeah, everyone calls him Leggett. So, yeah, it's Xavier Leggett. Uh, I'm still getting used to saying that because I call him Leggett. Um, yeah, so we got him in, traded up into the first round, got him big, big threats, a lot of um, 
similarities to uh, DK Metcalf, just a big physical guy, great at getting up, contested catches, using his body strength, speed for such a big guy, great with his hands. I think 1,200 yards at South Carolina last year in the SAC, seven touchdowns. Uh, so we're bringing them guys in with other offensive threats, both from Texas, the number one running back in the draft in Jonathan Brook, second round, and fourth uh, fourth round, first pick, 101 overall, uh, Jatavian Sanders. Arguably one of the best uh, tight ends in the draft. Uh, I think Brock Bowers is a bit of a unicorn, so I think everyone would say he was number one, but you can't even cast him as a tight end because he's an absolute freak. Um, so outside of Brock Bowers, you could argue that Sanders is the best tight end in that draft class. So we've really, really put some effort into helping Bryce Young. Uh, and I think with Dave Canales, who done wonders with um, Geno Smith in Seattle, Bega Mayfield in Tampa Bay, both guys who were kind of down and out in their careers, like written off, done, finished in the league, given one last chance. Gino got Seattle, Big I got uh, um, Tampa Bay. And because of Dave Canales' development and his offensive style and the, the, the quarterback whisperer that people say that he is, he was able to get them playing that well that after only one year, they got big contracts. Like They're the future guys now. They've solidified themselves as the franchise quarterbacks big money, long-term deals. And I think that's a bit money ball as well in terms of why we hired him. Because in the draft cycle, in the, the, the managerial hiring cycle, sorry, I should have said, it, it was almost pretty much all the same candidates like uh, Ezra Evero, our defensive coordinator. He interviewed pretty much everywhere. Um, Todd Munkin, who else was that? Everyone, um, Jim, Jim Harbour, uh, Raheem Morris, so, so many, so many coaches, everybody interviewed. Like it was all pretty much the same candidates, but we were the only ones interested in Dave Canales, which I thought at first was a bit of a red flag. Like nobody was interested in this guy. And he doesn't have a ton of experience. He only had one year as an offensive coordinator, which isn't a lot. Like back in Seattle, he had a few jobs. He was the quarterback coach, the wide receiver coach. But yeah, he's only had one year having a job as high as an offensive coordinator one year, then bang, straight into a head coaching job. So this maybe is premature, uh, but I think that is why it's like a money ball sign. I think statistically, he's amazing at offense and he's amazing at managing quarterbacks. And so I think that's why David Tepper just went, right, get him. He's the guy. With a little help from um, Dan Morgan as well, because they work together in Seattle. I think their, their doors, uh, their offices were only like two doors apart. Uh, so they knew each other very well. I think Dan Morgan probably helped recommend Dave Canales for that job. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of things are looking good, particularly on the offense. Uh, like I said, Edger Evero is a fantastic defensive coordinator. We've lost a lot of guys like Brian Burns, um, Frankie Louvu, Jeremy Chin. There's a, we've lost a lot of key players on defense, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. But all anyone's ever going to care about in 2024 is offense, is Bryce Young. Can he be that guy? Can he be the reason... We traded so much away, DJ Moore included, future number one overall picks. Can he be that guy? Hopefully. That's what we're hoping for. And it doesn't have to be 10 wins. We don't have to win the NFC South next season. As long as we see progression, that is key. Like Whatever the win-loss column, I couldn't really give a damn right now. And I know not a lot of Panthers fans really do. All we want to see is, can Canales be a head coach? Can Bryce Young be the quarterback? And if we can find them answers, if we can be excited by it, great. That, that's it. That, we don't really care much for it. I'll use a reference to um, Ian Rappaport. I don't know if you've seen the video. Uh, I think it was during the combine, during like the combine hype, they were talking about all the teams, what you can expect from them next year. Someone asked, uh, what do you think about the Carolina Panthers in 2024? And Ian, I, I really like what Ian Rapport said. It sounded slightly disrespectful to start with, but it made a ton of sense. What he said is, I don't want to talk about the Carolina Panthers. I want to talk about the Arizona Cardinals. So the Arizona Cardinals in 2022 weren't a very good team, had a lot of problems, changed GM, head coach. Like Kyla had some injuries and they had to chop and change some players, trades, cuts, drafts, blah, blah, blah. And they only won four games last year, which isn't great, but it was the first year of Jonathan Gannon. And they played some pretty good football. I think um, Josh Dobbs played really, really well in the first few games. They started 0-2, coming up against the 2-0 Dallas Cowboys. Everyone thought that was going to be a bloodbath, and they won. 
And that's the kind of team that they ended up being, even after losing Josh Dobbs. Kyla came back for the final few games. They were exciting. And they seemed to have a plan. I think Gannon installed a, a system and a method that you think, you know what it is? This team can be something. Get Kyla fit. They look good. Like, give Gannon a couple of years to install his plan. And this team's going somewhere. But the thing is, they were exciting. They were fun to watch. They only won four games, which is disappointing. But they were exciting. And you could see where they want to go. I think the same can be said for Carolina. Like, we don't know how it's going to go. Four wins, it's double what we won last year. So that's great. But as long as we can see what Dave Canales' plan is and we know that Bryce Young is the guy for the future, it shows huge progression. The win-loss column, couldn't give a damn. It's okay. And the best thing about it is that we can get a top five pick, as the Cardinals did, and got one of the best wide receiver prospects of all time. So that's a plus. So whatever happens in 2024, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters is progression. Yeah, and you, you mentioned it, Dennis. Great point you made and a great insight into um, life as a Panthers fan. It can't, it can't be easy at times. And, um, <laughs> it's certainly not. No. <laughs> um, you, you think about, you mentioned Canal as one of the ins, new head coach. Um, you know, you look at, maybe not Gina Smith, but Beacon Mayfield, similar size to Bryce Young. You look at the small mm. sort of fullback you got, I think you got Russell Wilson, Kyler to, uh, then you've got sort of, by Bryce Young in amongst that bracket of maybe the, the shorter quarterbacks. And I think Canales, does that almost give you confidence about Bryce Young, the fact that he has turned guys who, you know, Gina Smith, career backup for a lot of his time, he comes in to Seattle, has that year starting, wins comeback play of the year. Baker Mayfield comes in, that one year, I believe it was a one-year $4 million deal. in Tampa Yeah, Bay. something like that, yeah. And he's, um, the profit's like over $100 million. He's now got a massive deal with the Buccaneers and, He's pretty much resurrected his career, really, um, through that year with Canales. So I think Bryce Young, I mean, I know a lot of rookies do struggle in their rookie year, but you've got to say that's probably one of the worst rookie years I've seen of any quarterback, you know, and not didn't even get a first-round pick, a first overall pick as a result of that. So it's, you know, does that give you a lot of promise and confidence that even if, you know, he's not going to, you know, take a team to a seat bowl, or even the playoffs. Does almost that give you confidence that you know if he can turn Baker Mayfield, a guy who was ridiculed at the time this time last year, that he could do the same thing with Bryce Young and yeah, turn him into not not maybe maybe not as accurate a quarterback we thought we were getting, but at least some form of that quarterback we all thought we were getting um, out of Alabama. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, I think that's a key reason why David Tepper and uh, Dan Morgan wanted him. As I say, nobody else wanted him. He wasn't interviewed by anybody else. But I think we understood that we need someone who can manage Bryce Young. And spoke about Geno Smith. He was a backup for the majority of his career. He was like, what, 31 maybe? He's 32 years old or something. Like He was an old journeyman. Couldn't really establish himself. Backup guy. One year. Dave Canales. Massive contract. Same with uh, um, Baker Mayfield, not as old, still quite young, only just out of his rookie contract, but he was pushed out of uh, Cleveland, had a, a second chance in Carolina, didn't even last a year. We let go of him after about like, 12 weeks, if that. Uh, the Rams didn't want to keep him on. Uh, so he kind of seemed like he was kind of going down that same path, like he was going to be a journeyman, a backup at best, a, a bridge guy maybe every here and there. Um, but yeah, Canales has worked absolute wonders. And the best thing about Bryce is, he's not a journeyman. He's not, he hasn't been pushed out by anyone. He's only in year two. I mean, there's a reason he was the Heisman Trophy winner and the number one overall pick. Like, them accolades don't come to anyone. Like, they're, they're not just kind of average accolades that somebody can have in their career. They're huge. And there is a reason why he has them accolades. Like, we traded a lot away for him to, to go get that guy. We went up from nine to one because we wanted our guy. Um, and yeah, you, you say it was one of the worst uh, rookie quarterback years possibly ever. And statistically, it's it's not wrong, but it's I just feel so sorry for him. And I think most non Panthers fans that maybe didn't watch every game are maybe a little bit short sighted in either stats or looking at the win loss column. Like if you didn't watch every single minute of every single Panthers game, like we did. Maybe you didn't see some of his best plays because he he actually played some really good football last year. 
And it was partly because of Frank Reich's offense, which was garbage. Uh, we chopped and changed the uh, offensive play caller a couple of times. We gave it the um, offensive coordinator, Thomas Brown. He had it for a couple of weeks and gave it back to Reich, and then Reich got fired. Then it went to somebody else because Brown get left as well. Like, it was it was awful. Like, it, was, it was a bad situation for any quarterback, let alone a rookie. Like He was just chucked in the deep end, didn't have a number one receiver. DJ Moore would have been amazing for him, but you had to settle for Adam Thielen. The offensive line was garbage. Like, he was just thrown into an awful, awful situation. And I challenge anybody, name me a quarterback who could have taken the Panthers to the playoffs last year. Not a single one. Put anybody behind the offensive line with the offensive weapons, Mahomes, Brady, anybody. Might have won a couple more games, might have been able to manage the games through and win a couple more, but anybody would have struggled in that offense. So I feel so, so sorry for Bryce Young and that people are kind of writing him off after one year. And I think what made it worse as well is that CJ Stroud had a great year. And that's a big shadow that loomed over him as well. Um, but it's a very, very different situations. I feel like you could flip those. You could have, we, if we drafted CJ Stroud, which everyone says we should have, we've made a big mistake. CJ would have had a similar, if not worse, maybe slightly better season because the situations are different. What um, what Texas uh, the Texans done? It was brilliant. That D'Amico Ryan's, um, Bobby Slowick, the receivers that they had, a great offensive line. Completely different situations. I don't know if Bryce could have done what CJ done in Texas. In in I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say that he would have, but he might have. But all I know is that CJ Stroud would not have had the career, the, the, the season that he had if he was at Carolina, guaranteed. So this needs to kind of feel like rookie year 2.0 for Bryce Young. He's now got an offensive line that we've spent $153 million on. We've drafted and traded for a receiver. We're giving him some weapons. The running back, the tight end in the draft. Canales, offensive guru. This has to be his new rookie year and the best part about that is at least he's got one year of experience he was able to use last year is is a bit of kind of like a cheat code i say this is kind of like rookie year 2.0 in the set but he's he's already had 16 games in the nfl i think what that could have done for him is invaluable experience like being able to just get in the league see what he can and can't get away with mistakes He's a rookie. That's why you call it a rookie mistake, a rookie error. If you can't make mistakes in your rookie year, when can you? That's the time to get it out of your system, figure out the league, try things, get away with things, make mistakes. It's fine. So I think now he's been put into a much better position. He's just got to forget about last year, but also kind of keep it as a chip on his shoulder. Use it as fuel to develop into the future. Now he's got Canales. The sky's the limit. So this is his second opportunity now. Let's see what he can do. But I still believe he's the guy, and I believe Canales can get the best out of him. And you mentioned there before about it being sort of rookie year 2.0, and I never thought of it that way, if I'm honest. And it's a great way to look at it because, you know, everyone forgets just you know, how bad Peyton Manning was in his first Exactly. First season. And yeah. he's gone on to also win two Super Bowls, multiple MVPs, and a Hall of Fame jacket. So, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think many quarterbacks do succeed in year one. I, I really don't. So, yeah, I think that I, I love the fact that I didn't realize there was that much money, but $153 million on defensive line shows that they, you know, you think about Andrew Luck, but his whole career, that the Colts never gave him that really, that protection that he needed. So it's good to see that the Colts, the, Colts, the Panthers are actually tr- at least trying to help him. I know they need to go with DJ Moore and all that kind of stuff to go and get him, but I think they gone out and got received in the first round. Adam Thielen had a great year last year for what didn't, people didn't think he'd do much last year for you guys. So I think I think it's good that they're doing what I can. Again, guy, he knows how to work with callbacks of that size. So I think, yeah, I think um I don't know whether it was Tep or whether it was your GM that made the decision to, to get Canales in and spend all the money on on the offensive linemen. But I think, you know, Tep, whoever it is, you can't really fault them for at least giving him a best shot. Almost learning from maybe a year ago. And you mentioned Canales as well there. I mean, great year with Geno you know, Smith in 2022. But since Canales left that building, Smith took a little bit of a downturn in 2023. Yeah, 
And that is my worry with Baker Mayfield going into 2024, that he's no longer got Canales. We could see a little bit of a dip, which could mm-hmm. mean in what is a probably a less one of the, the worst divisions in terms of talent in the division, I can see them falling off. Do you think that almost, if, if any, even though you're probably not going to win many games and it couldn't be a 7-8, I think 7-8 is probably the, will be a great season for you guys. Do you think Amazing. almost the fact that no team really is going away as the clear favourites, do you think that maybe a, that, that division is maybe as, if you're honest, poor as it is, mm-hmm. could help you if you're going to surprise, potentially win that division? In the future, uh, next year, no. Uh, I, I don't think we've got what it takes to win it in 2024. I'm, I'm not going to put my neck on the line and say that. Um, but 2025, certainly 2026, why not? Because if you look around the league, as you say, we the, the Bucks are losing out. Maybe Baker will have like a, a Geno second season. Not the best, but we've also took a few guys away. Um, Brad Idzik is our new offensive coordinator. He's from He was the Tampa Bay uh, receivers coach. Uh, we've got the Harold Goodwin was the assistant head coach and the run game coordinator. Uh, we've got um, Joe Gilbert, who was the offensive line coach. So Dave Canales has taken a lot of puzzles away from, from Tampa Bay. Um, players are only getting older. Mike Evans, like, yeah, they've, they've lost a couple of guys. Is it Shaq Barrett? I think he left. Um, mm. And you, you look at uh, the Saints. Urgh! I don't know what they're doing. Uh, their future is very suspect. Uh, I don't like the head coach. I don't like Derek Carr. Um, yeah, I don't know about the Saints. Uh, the Fal- the Falcons are shaping up to do good. I think they've got a good head coach. They may have shot themselves in the foot with a quarterback situation, paying Cousins $100 million and then overreaching on a quarterback uh, number eight in the draft. I don't know why they did that. I think both decisions were a little bit crazy, to be honest one may be affected by it mentally, may not be able to get through the rest of it. Um, so yeah, in the future, we may be the best option to win the NFC South going forward, whether that's 25 or 26, I don't know. Not 24. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we've we got the young quarterback, the number one overall pick, the Heisman Trophy winner, a young, ex- a young, exciting head coach, brilliant offensive mind. I don't think Ezra ever will stick around too long, to be honest. I think he'll be a head coach in 2025. But if we are able to keep hold of him, we've got a great coaching staff, a decent young team. The, the draft that we've just had looks brilliant on paper. Whether it pays off or not, I don't know. So I think we maybe are the most exciting young team uh, and the, probably the ones to worry about mostly in the future. Uh, so, yeah, I think that should be the game plan. As I say, 2024... Four wins would be great. If it's six, seven, whatever, that's fantastic. It's, but it's not going to win you the division. But I think we should be looking to win the division in 2025. If we don't, 2026 must be a winning year. So, yeah, I don't think we're too far removed. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a history lesson into Carolina as well. So, as I said before, 2023 was one of our three worst years. The other two was 2020, was 2001. Where we went one and fifteen, the other one was twenty ten, where we went two and fourteen. Obviously, back when it was sixteen game seasons. After both seasons, we fired our head coaches, got new ones. We had new quarterbacks. Obviously, twenty ten, we ended up with Ron Rivera and Cam Newton. Back in twenty twenty one, one and fifteen. That was probably our single worst season. We're doing okay. Yeah, two. I think it was seven wins. It might be in seven wins actually in both years. So twenty twenty uh, two thousand two. 2011, I think we won seven games. So it wasn't a winning record, but it was a huge improvement. 2003, we went to a Super Bowl. Only two years after the change, after the worst year. 2010, John Fox got fired, replaced by Ron Rivera, Cam Newton. 2011, went to the Super Bowl in 2015. So that only took four years to get to the Super Bowl after a worst year. So now we've had the third worst year in our in our franchise history. What's to say we're not going to go to a Super Bowl within, say, five years? I, I certainly don't think he's going to do what John Fox did in 2003 and take us only two years. I think that would take a miracle. But what Ron Rivera did in 2015, why not? I, I think we are probably, if you look four or five years down the line, I think we are set up to be the better team in that awful, awful division, which it has been for the past three years. It's been an awful division. It's terrible. Um, so, yeah, anyone can win that division with... I think the Bucs won it in 2022 with eight wins. I think they were eight and nine. A losing record won them that division. 
And I think last year was nine and eight. Like even then it wasn't that great. So yeah, why not? Why can't we be the best team in this division in a couple of years' time? I love the optimism, I really do. It's um why well, I love getting fans of each teams on because yeah, you get to hear that real that real confidence and real uh, passion from each fan, and I absolutely love that. Uh, before we do the win and loss tie segment, who is the most likely Panther to win MVP in 2024? None of them. <laughs> <laughs> NFL or like team MVP, would you say? No, uh, NFL MVP. If there's one, if there's, any, if there's going to be some sort oh, of miracle Christ. that you're alluding to, and the Panther player wins MVP in the whole National Football League, who would it be? Uh, that's a brilliant question. Um, I don't know. Bryce could win comeback player of the year. Mm. Uh, we'd look at him to want to be an MVP candidate. Like, hopefully, maybe he's in the running. If he's maybe one of like the top 10, that would be an unbelievable year. Um, outside of him, I don't know, because it's always really going to be an offensive player, isn't it? Unless it's like a premium edge rusher. Like, we've lost Brian Burns, so we don't have that. Uh, Derek Brown was probably our best player last year, defensive tackle, who's just got a big new payday. Um, other than Aaron Donald, how many defensive tackles win MVP? Um, it's too early for league. It's, I don't think it'll be Johnson or Thielen. Uh, probably not a running back either. So yeah, out of everybody, you you would hope and pray that it could be Bryce Young. Fair enough. Um, right, heading on to the win-loss tie segment. Of course, you have been on the last two years when you've done this. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the Panthers went two and fifteen last season. Do you at all remember what your prediction was twelve months ago, record-wise? Yes, uh, I, I don't really want to say it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think it was nine and eight. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, okay. uh, I mean, to put you at a bit of ease, well, we had Browns fan in episode one of this um, off-season series. He had the exact record prediction. Um, just forgotten who it was now. Um, oh. Our Chargers fan Lee went for eleven wins, and they won way less than that. So that <laughs> that's enough to put you at ease. That, um, I will. Yeah. I will put myself at further ease, though. We'll go back another year. I did get it right in twenty twenty two when I came on here for the first time. I predicted that's a seven right. and ten record, and it was so. Uh, yeah, last year was unpredictable. Like like I said before, we thought we had the coaching staff and the quarterback. It, it should have been in a seven eight nine win season, but it was just an absolute train wreck. So. Yeah, I don't think anybody could have predicted two wins for Carolina last year. <laughs> um, so week one, you're traveling to New Orleans Saints to um, take on the um, seven and nine sort of what's the word? They're, they're, if our team, I think, will be will be stuck on seven and nine for years. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're trapped and they're not good. They're not bad enough to be a first overall pick team. They're not, they're not good enough to make the playoffs. They're yeah. sort of in that. So that seven and nine trap. Um, win loss or tie for that one? Saints are an awful one to predict. As I said before, I, I don't really like them at all. I don't think that they, they are a good team. They've got some decent players. They've got like Chris Olave on offense with um, Alvin Kamara. Great defense. I think they've got re- a really, really good defense. Uh, Carl Michaels, their offensive coordinator, deserves to be fired after last year. Uh, I think they're lucky to still have the head coach. Well, he's lucky to have a job, I should, I should say. Uh, yeah, I think the head coach might not last the season uh and Derek Carr I, I don't rate as a top quarterback at all so yeah that they're a tricky team like you say they're about a seven win team that bang average that they're, they're not terrible uh but they're not great either um so yeah this one is really really difficult especially after our last year we've made a ton of off-season moves so we don't really know what we're going to be in week one yet uh so with it being on the road I'll give the Saints the victory this one okay now, next game I want to touch on with you because this one is a home to Chargers. But not only is it the first game of the season at home, you're going to be going to it. Your first time <laughs> in it charge. Um, just how excited are you for that? Oh, absolutely buzzing. And not that I'm counting down the days at all, but it's 55 days. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I can't wait. Uh, yeah, I've, it's been a long time coming. We were going to do it last year. Like this is pretty much the honeymoon. Uh, we we got married in September last year. Uh, so we we did want to do it last year, but I think financially it made a bit more sense to just wait a year, save up a bit so we can do it properly. Uh, but yeah, as a Panthers fan since 2011, uh, 13 years, it, it's been long, long in the pipeline for me. Um, did get to see it in London uh, in 2019. Uh, I'd, I'd like to go to Germany this year, but Carolina's the priority. 
once this was on the cards, I couldn't give a damn about Germany, to be honest. It's all about Carolina. It's all about Charlotte. Um, nearly every other day, I'm, I'm looking for things to do, places to eat, places to go, things to see. Uh, but yeah, that that first game, uh, as it first game of the season, I think that was kind of always a target as well. Like I always wanted to, to do that one because I think the atmosphere will be amazing. Uh, coming up against a, a changed uh, Chargers team with Jim Harbaugh there as well. We don't really know what they're going to do. Um, so yeah, I, I can't wait. But the day before, uh, that's obviously a Sunday game. On the Saturday, I'm going down to Columbia, South Carolina to see a big SEC matchup with the, the game Cox and LSU. So yeah, big weekend of football. Um, I, I can't wait. I'm I'm dreading the heat, to be honest with you. I'm saying that it's going to be about high 30s. I, I'm not dealing with it very well today. It's only about 20. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to the heat. That's the one thing that uh, can I can wait for. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole journey, just getting to Carolina, seeing Bank of America Stadium. Yeah, it's, I, I can't wait. I'm buzzing. I don't know whether you've seen the new receiver yet, but there's a bit where Debo... Samuel goes to um, South Carolina. He actually mm-hmm. he had a little chat with Xavier Leggett, or Leggett, I should say, uh, <laughs> on the sideline. Um, so that if you haven't watched that yet, that's a good opportunity to get a little bit of uh, insight into the South Carolina experience. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited for you. I mean, I my one I've been to that stage. My one regret that I, I didn't see it in the daytime. I went to a night game. I think yeah, you caught a torrential rain, didn't you? Yeah, that was, <laughs> the only, I, I, I might get the opposite end. I might get the <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah, it's um, to be opposite spectrums of the weather. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's going to be, I think, the one thing that drew me to that stadium on All or Nothing was seeing Sea of Blue with the, the architecture behind the stadium. And I think mm-hmm. there's some stadiums where I think they're more better for night games. I think Lambeau Field is one where it's like that. Uh, I think you can sit so far in that as well. But I think some stadiums, um, the Cleveland Brown Stadium being one and the Panther Stadium, Bank of America, I think they are ones where. Uh, same with Minnesota and Chicago because you get that skyline view. I think mm-hmm. it's wasted if it's in the night time. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to for it for you, really. And <laughs> um, I wasn't there long enough, but I did get to see something called Freedom Parks. That's my one my one bit of advice for you to sing to see in Carolina um, is Freedom Park. That was a really nice really nice walk um, along mm-hmm. there. Uh, there is, I've got a long long list. I've been asking people on on the Panthers Magpie, everybody that I follow. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a list. Well, I'm only there for seven days. Like the the things that I could do, I could be there for the year. Uh, but that's that's not on the list. That's a new recommendation. And uh, me, me wife likes a good walk as well. So I'll, I'll put that on the list and we'll, we'll look out for that. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. So I even made a friend in Freedom Park. I remember I who I met up with since that happened. So I was in there, got talking to this couple. Um, Riley and Lee, shout out to them if they are watching this. Um, and. And yes, yeah, so we've got talking to them, and I've met them up them since in Washington. That's where they're from. And um, got to went to a Commanders game. They even got me to go into a box for the second half of the game, which was an amazing experience. You know, free food, amazing seats. Um, but yeah, no, so I wasn't there long enough, and I had a bit of a, a dodgy Airbnb experience. But, um, <laughs> but the actual that park was yeah my my biggest highlight of the of my time there. So yeah, I, I would recommend it. But yeah, I do realize that you probably got. A lot on, a lot of things to do. But, um, yeah, if I had to give you one, for even people who are listening on the podcast who were going to the game in Charlotte this year, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that to anyone who was going that way. Um, week three, you're back on the road again, this time against the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, no, we haven't even done week two I was going to say, I, I didn't give a yeah. prediction. Um, but yeah, th- this is another one, like I say, with uh, Jim Harbour. Uh, I've I've been a fan of the the Chargers for a couple of years. I, I really liked what they were able to do. I think they were coached quite badly. Uh, I, I like Justin Herbert. I think the, the defense looked good. I think when they were got in like, like Khalil Mack and I, I remember when they got JC Jackson, I don't really think he panned out, but I like him, uh, Asante Samuel, Darwin James. Like th- They've got a brilliant team. Uh, it just hasn't really worked out for them. And they've lost two key receivers as well in um, Keenan Allen and uh, Mike Williams as well. So uh Austin Eckler as well. So, yeah, I really, really don't know what they're going to do. Uh, might take Jim Harbaugh a little while to get into it. Um, and for it being the home game, I would love to see a win, especially because I'm going to be there. I want to give this a win so, so bad. But I don't. I just don't know. I think Jim Harbaugh and the, his Chargers um, with Justin, uh, Justin Herbert, I, I, I see a Chargers win, unfortunately. I think it'll be close. I think this will be one of them games that Bryce can get stuck in and be one of them games, as I mentioned, like the Cardinals before, we can be in this game. I don't think the Chargers are going to blow us out the water by any means. Um, 
But yeah, as long as we're in this game, we're exciting. Bryce throws a couple of touchdowns. We'll look good. Offensive line holds up. Uh, and we'll lose. It's just going to be one of them. I think we're going to have plenty of them during this season. So yeah, I will say a loss, unfortunately. Is that almost that sort of lack of expectation to win the game? That almost um, that, that, will that almost make you enjoy the day more? Because I know I've been to, you know, I went to game in, the game in London, 21 against Jags, so we were the favourites. That was real heartbreak. And then <laughs> as forward to last year, I went to the Philadelphia game. I was, at, I was as going to Lincoln Financial Field in the cold. I wasn't expecting a win. Um, so I think almost. I can go away from a game a lot more disappointed if you lose, if you're not expecting to win. So is that almost, I don't remember when my dad, when I went first went to Anfield, my dad said, you know, just enjoy the day, the result doesn't matter, which in hindsight is complete bollocks. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think in some aspects, yeah. Yeah, but I think your first time going to a game for your, for your team, especially somewhere so far away, like Carolina was compared to Newcastle, mm-hmm. does that almost just make you even more focus on just enjoying the day, enjoying the tailgate, enjoy the week and all that kind of stuff and not put too much pressure and emphasis on on the team winning. Yeah, I think so. Like, I've been kind of used to this, like, obviously, as, as a Newcastle fan as well. Like, I know the past couple of years haven't been too bad, but uh, the last 29, 30 years before that of my lifetime, uh, yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, and as a Panthers fan as well, with the exception of 2015, it's been a bit of a tough ride, particularly these last four or five years. It's been awful, uh, but you, you still kind of get your hopes high. Like like I say, last year with the coaching staff and the Bryce Young had expectations. We thought we could win games. Um, but after a two-win season, you can't expect a lot. So, yeah, like I say, four wins will be fine as long as we're exciting. We'll look good. Uh, we can see the vision. We can see the plan for the future. That That's enough. Like So, yeah, like thanks. a lot of these games, particularly towards the back end of the schedule, which we'll get onto in a bit, are tough. Uh, but in the early window, it's not too bad of a schedule. I think some of these games we can win, uh, but we've just kind of got to keep an open mind and remember we won two games last year. Like, don't take anything for granted. Stay humble. Just stay aware. Just make, just enjoy the football. Just enjoy what you're going to see. Uh, so, yeah, especially for me going all that way to Carolina. Obviously, I want to see a win. I'm desperate to see a win. Uh, but if we don't and we'll play well, then, yeah, I'll, I'm sure I'll enjoy the experience anyway. I will be at the tailgate. Uh, and I'll probably get absolutely wrecked afterwards as well. So, yeah, looking looking forward to a win, win, loss or tie. It, it, it doesn't matter. But yeah, a, a good game, close game, exciting game, good good offense. Bryce Young. Yeah, whatever happens, happens. But yeah, I don't think we'll win this one. You actually mentioned Newcastle. And I want to ask you a hypothetical question: Which of these three um, haunts you more? Oh, the Super Bowl loss to the Broncos, the two and fifteen season this year, or? The PSG penalty against Newcastle in the Champions League in Paris. <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I'm probably going to be scarred for life after the two and fifteen season. Um, yeah, the the penalty miss was heartbreaking, but it was more to do with the the, the referee. Really, it was a terrible decision. Um, ultimately, we still got a draw in Paris, and we absolutely rattled them four one at St James's Park. Um, so. Yeah, that was disappointing, but I think it's got to be the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, that's the most disappointing one, I would say, because we were the favourites. We were 15 and 1 during the season, one of the, the singular greatest seasons of any team of all time. Uh, Cam Newton, MVP. Even in the playoffs, we absolutely annihilated everyone. Like the Cardinals in the in the championship game we obliterated them. So yeah, we went into that game confident that this is going to be the first Super Bowl in franchise history, only the second one we've appeared in but we're going to win that trophy. And it, it was a write-off. We just didn't turn up. Cam was poor. Uh, not jumping on that fumble is probably one of them scarring moments like the PSG penalty. Like, that's one thing that I'll never get out of my mind. Seeing him step back, going towards it and stepping back, like, that's just as heartbreaking as seeing the referee point of the penalty spot in Paris. Um, so, yeah, probably the, the, the 2015 Super Bowl. Yeah, that's going to be the worst one, I think. Yeah, I think, I think that probably is the answer I was expecting. Um, week three, I mentioned it before, on the road to the Raiders. Yeah, this will be a good one, I think. Like I said, not a bad start of a schedule, and this is where I will get that first win. Um, the, the Raiders, I'm not too sure about. Don't know where their future lies. Um, I, I'm only three episodes into receiver, but I think Devontae is a bit sick. 
Uh, not really sure what their quarterback situation is. Probably looking like it's going to be uh, Garner Minshew, not Aiden O'Connell, but either way. Garner played all right against Carolina for Indy last year, but I, I love Garner Minshew as a person. And I think he's an underrated quarterback, but he's not one of the top 32 quarterbacks for me. He's, he's a phenomenal backup, bridge guy if needs be, which I think this is for him. But I think they've got a great D-line as well, obviously taking your guy, Christian Wilkins, to go alongside Max Crosby. That's scary. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is where Robert Hunt and uh, Damian Lewis get their money's worth, protect Bryce Young from them animals. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really like the Raiders. I think they've got a good coach, but he only had a what, handful of games last year. Played really, really well under him, so they can kick on. But yeah, I'm not convinced by the Raiders. So yeah, I'm going to put a, a Carolina W here. That's actually a game I'm really intrigued by because it's a Dolphins fan. I'm seeing two of my former players in the same battle. The trenches you've got could be potentially Robert Hunt up against Christian Wilkins. <laughs> that that could be one I'm really that could be a really fascinating one and one I'd love to see. Um, week four, it's a home game, but this time against the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, a great team. Um, I know their season didn't really pan out too well last season, particularly in the early parts. I think that they kicked on later on. Um, but yeah, I really thought that the after the Super Bowl 2021, I thought they would kick on and become one of the best teams in the league with Burroughs, one of the top three quarterbacks. I'd probably still put him in that argument, whether he's in it or not, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, as long as they can keep some players fit, which they didn't really do very well last season, uh, like Jamar Chase. T Higgins seems to want out. I think he reluctantly signed his franchise tag. So could be a bit of a love and war in uh, Cincinnati, to be honest. But if everything pulls together, they're a great team. They're a very, very good team. So, yeah, I'll, I'll say a loss, yeah. Yeah, I think if Bo is healthy, he's two years being healthy, a Super Bowl appearance and an AFC Championship appearance. So I think mm -hmm. um, if he, if he's healthy, then I think, you know, because he is, for me, the nearest we got to Tom Brady in terms of that mentality. Big is. I think Mahomes probably is that now, but I think Burrow, for me, has that, has that mentality, composure and big games. I think as long as... As long as he's healthy and they, they make the playoffs, I think that'll be a team to really watch out for. And if he's healthy the whole year, it wouldn't shock me if it's them against the Chiefs once again in the playoffs, either divisional round or, or AFC Championship game. Um, mm -hmm. Week five, you take, you're going to Soldier Field to take on the mm. Bears. Yeah, this is one that I'm not really looking forward to in the sense that we've kind of got like a rivalry with the Bears mm -hmm. after the, the number one overall pick, DJ Moore trade. Uh, we went to Soldier Field last year and got beat 24 20 very narrow defeat. Uh, they weren't a very good team, to be honest. Like, I haven't rated Chicago in a long, long time. I, I am a Justin Fields fan, but I don't really think he got the rub of the green uh, up there in Chicago. Uh, but they've moved on and putting rookies into good situations. Pff, Caleb Williams is in a pretty good one. I, I mean, he could have been in a better team, but like the situation with DJ Moore, with uh, Mike Williams, as I just mentioned. Uh, with DeAndre Swift and Cole Komet and uh, who else they got? They've got a couple other guys there as well. Yeah, it was uh, Keenan Allen, not Mike Williams. Keenan Allen, sorry, yeah. Um, and it, it, but they've got a, uh, a Dunze as well. Like, yeah. yeah, like Bryce wasn't put in the best situation and you can blame that for his failures last year. But Caleb Williams has no excuses. And he's very arrogant. I don't really like him. I think the way that he presents himself, I'm, I'm not a fan. He's a very good quarterback. I won't hold that against him. Uh, but I think he's a bit too big for his boots. Like He hasn't even played a snap yet. Uh, it just, I think him and um, Marvin Harrison Jr., I think they're very dislikable people. I think they haven't even played in the NFL yet. But they're coming across as if they're Tom Brady and Randy Moss. Like I don't like that. Um, so yeah, very arrogant. I would absolutely love to see him fall flat on his face, especially because of this rivalry that we've kind of developed for some weird reason. I mean, I think we were doing them a favor, to be honest, but they seem to start this rivalry. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I think Willie, uh, Caleb Williams is in a brilliant situation. Uh, the offense is really looking good. Uh, they've gave him the weapons that Justin Fields never had. Uh, so yeah, I think again, like last year, 24-20, this could be another one of them games where I think we'll play well. It'll be close. I think Bryce will have a good game. Uh, but ultimately, I think the Bears will come out on top. Yeah, I mean, it's very rare you get a callback, go first overall to a 7 and 9 team with Swift, with Keenan Allen, with Cole Komet. I think, you know, he's going to a team with, I think the head coaching thing is a bit of a question mark, but everything else, I mean, isn't, I think 
it's the first track I think of a rookie is actually expected to win eight, nine games. I think if he doesn't win eight games, I think there's, you know, there'll be, a lot, there'll be some questions asked. Um, I actually do like Williams. I'm, I, I, do, I quite like his personality. I think it's um, quite refreshing. And I think that it's, you know, um, they had, they had, you know, Jay Cutler personality was, uh, I think, you know, <laughs> Jim McMahon was a bit of a, sort of a, 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 a Dennis Rodman, the two very sort of, out there personalities that play in Chicago. I think he'll fit in right in. Obviously, he signed a new deal recently, so a four year extension, which I am. Um, it's very rare for a rookie to get that straight away, but and they obviously believe in him. So, um, yeah, it's. Um, I think, yeah, like you probably shouldn't get to get out of jail free card, but Caleb doesn't, if I'm honest. No, he doesn't get any. Um, yeah, no excuses. As you say, no excuses. Um, week six, you're going against the Atlanta Falcons at home. A horrible, boring game with probably two horrible, boring teams in a horrible, boring division. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about this one. Um, this is at home. Uh, pff, I don't know. I, where are we at now? We're at, I've got us at one and four. Um, yeah. I think we're still trying to sort things out at this point. I don't think it's going to take um, Dave Canales... Uh, a, a quick amount of time to get his feet under the car, but I don't think it really did at Tampa Bay last year, to be fair. I think Tampa Bay struggled a lot in the early days, uh, but kind of midway through, once they kind of started to establish the run game um, with Rashad White, that's when things started to come together and they looked like they were going to win the division and go on to... I think they did get a playoff win, didn't they? But I think that came late on in the season. Obviously, it was uh, Dave Canales' first year as the offensive coordinator, so... I do think we might struggle in the early stages, which is a shame because this is the, the easy part of the season. The, the end's really, really difficult. Um, but yeah, Falcons, I don't know. Decent team. Uh, if they've got Cousins, they've got an experienced quarterback. Uh, I love Bijan Robinson. I think he's a beast um, with Kyle Pitts and Drake London. I think they'll be looking for them guys to step up because they haven't really had the careers that they were hoping for being top 10 draft picks. Um but yeah, I'll uh, give Atlanta the win here. Yeah. Okay, and then week seven uh, is on the road against the Washington Commanders. Oh, that's another one that I don't like. Um, I, I think this is going to be another one of them close games. Maybe it's only three points in it. Maybe it's a field goal to separate it. Uh, a walk or field goal, perhaps. Um, but they're just so unpredictable, really. They've got a new rookie quarterback that might could do with being sat for a little while. I don't know if he's really in the best situation. Obviously, I think uh, Sam Hull was the most sacked quarterback last year. Uh, Bryce Young was second, if you believe it or not. Like, he wasn't the most sacked quarterback. Uh, it was Sam Hull at the Commanders. Um, but yeah, they've made some decent off-season moves. New head coach, again, I think, uh, more defensive head coach as well. Um, made some decent moves, to be fair. Got a couple of guys from Carolina. Frankie Louv, who devastated we lost him. Uh, Jeremy Chin as well. He's gone over there. But they've also got uh, Scott Fitterer. He's just joined them during this week. Uh, I don't know what role. Um, and another ex-Panthers uh, GM, Marty Herney's both over there as well. So, unlucky commanders. Uh, you've got two horrible people in your front office there. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know about this one. I think it'll be close, but I, I think I might give this to Washington, you know. As much as I, would, I would think that this is a win if we're one and five, um, yeah, we need to start establishing some wins and the Commanders would be a great place to get it, especially on the road uh, with all them guys, with Fitterer, Herney, Luvu, Chin, all of them guys there. It's like the Panthers reserve team. Uh, it would be great to get the win, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to Washington, yeah. Okay, and then we cage it going to Denver to take on the Broncos. How it's shaping up now is actually exactly the same as I predicted last year. Uh, I did give you a 9-8 and eight prediction, but it did start difficult because I did predict that tricky start for Frank Reich and Bryce Young. Uh, we were on a bye week in week eight, I believe. Uh, and I had us going one and six into that. And I was only one result away from it because we're actually 0 and 7. Uh, I said one and eight. Uh, I, one and uh, six, sorry. Uh, but yeah, this is where I do think it'll turn around because I, I don't like the situation at the Broncos. I don't think... Um, uh, What's he called? Sean, what's his head coach? Payton. Sean Payton, yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, Ex-Saint as well, I should remember that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think Sean Payton's been the saviour that they thought they would, uh, and whether it's Zach Wilson, Bo Nix, is it Jarrett Stidham? Is that how they got him? Yeah. Like, I think that's a, yeah. 
it's a horrible line of quarterbacks. Um, <laughs> I, I do quite like Bo Nix. I, I liked him in college. A uh, bit of an older rookie. Uh, whether he'll hit the ground running in the NFL, I don't know. Not a huge Zach Wilson fan. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to have a horrible year. So, yeah, this is where we start to put some wins on the board. You know, I think, I said it before in one of the previous episodes, I think they may be the worst team in the AFC this year. You think about all four teams in the AFC North, absolutely yeah. loaded. I think all four teams could generally win that division. I think the Jets, obviously, if Rodgers is healthy, they're not going to be as bad as last year. And the Patriots, the ones that could be competing with that because they're, mm, yeah. you know, um, they're going to be still with you know, a rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, and the team's not great. But I think you look at the AFC South and, you know, the Jags, Texans, Colts, and Titans, maybe the Titans, but no one's going to be that bad, especially maybe those three. Titans are the one. And then the AFC West, AFC West I don't, I see the Raiders will be like a six win teams. And I, I don't, I think the Chargers will prove with, with uh, Jim Harbaugh there. So I think really it's one of the Broncos, Patriots or, um, or Titans for me. And I think the Broncos could easily be the kind of thing that it's by far the worst quarterback room in mm-hmm. the whole NFL. Yeah. You've got rookie, rookie quarterback and then you've got one guy who's been a backup this whole time, never been given a chance. And one guy who's been giving too many chances and <laughs> never seems to succeed. So yeah, I, I think I can see him being yeah, one of the worst teams in the AFC. Um, now, the first game of the Saints is in week nine, if you take them on at home. Yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, this is where the momentum's going to start kicking in, going to give this one a win. I predicted a loss away, uh, first game of the season. Uh, but I don't think the Saints are that good. Not good enough to beat us twice. Uh, I think there's a win here, whether it's week one or week nine. I don't know. Uh, I would like to say it at home at Bank of America. So, yeah, this one's a win. Okay. Next up, so... In week 10. So Germany last year had, I think by far, the best international game matchup on paper in the Chiefs against Dolphins. I've never seen any London game have that good a matchup. But this year in Germany, <laughs> probably the worst international matchup in history. Yeah, sorry, and Germany. Panthers take on the Giants at the Allianz Arena in Munich. Um, win loss or tie for that one. Uh, they're another team, the Giants, that I don't really think are a very good team. I, I don't really have my trust in uh, Daniel Jones. I think he had one good year. Was it 22 or 21 yeah. or 22? Yeah. Uh, pff, nah. Uh, Malik Neighbors, they've lost um, Barkley. They've got a couple of decent players. Uh, Darren Waller's retired. Brian Burns. They've added Brian Burns, uh, lost uh, Xavier McKinney. Um, so yeah, with the exception of a premium edge rusher. I, I don't know. I don't really think they're that good of a team. Uh, and Malik Neighbors, yeah, Burns and Neighbors are their best acquisitions this offseason. But they've lost a few as well and didn't replace uh, Daniel Jones. So now, uh, Guten Tag, we are taking the win. Um, so you go into week 11 by before. Um, I mean, you had one of the easier games of your season in week 10, arguably one of the hardest after your bye week to take on at home. The reigning champions looking for a three peat in the Chiefs. Yeah, that's a loss. <laughs> that's what we'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really think we're standing up in hell's chance. I mean, I think that that could be one of them games where I would like to say Bryce Young give you these all. Um, I think like last year, the was it was at week 16 against the Packers. That was probably Bryce Young's best mm. performance. Uh, three passing touchdowns. And we just ran out of time at the end. We could have even gone on to win it. But I think the referee was a little bit dubious. Uh, with his clock management there. Uh, and, and that was another catch. I, th- I think uh, Thielen had a catch that wasn't given. So we could have won that game. Um, but if Bryce Young can have a game like he did at the Packers, uh, but we lose, fine. That's fine. If we'll have a good game, this is one of them games where you're yeah, brushing shoulders with the best in the league. Um, on the other side of the ball, like you got Chris Jones. They're, they're a tremendous team. They're a really, really good team. Um, so yeah, if this is one that I'll be looking for a performance from, not a win. Uh, absolutely a loss, potentially a heavy one. Uh, but yeah, if, if we come out good, the offense clicks. Uh, Bryce Young throws a couple of touchdowns, but we concede about 90, then so be it. That's fine. For those who aren't aware, Keg's wife is a Packers fan, so that is always <laughs> a, a tense occasion in the household. Especially on your birthday as well, last year. That's right. Yeah, it was on your birthday, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that's... Um, I, always, I always think about, like, as a kid, like, my brother being a Man U fan, Classic Welsh people supporting Liverpool Man U, but um, that was a, um, yeah, always a tense thing. My dad being Liverpool as well, mm. um, you know, even look further back as, you know, grandparents 
met in Liverpool. My grand grew up in Manchester. It's um, yeah, they, that that game is always a tense one in the household, and uh, yeah. I imagine with the family as well of uh, of your other half, and and obviously your wife Paisley. Um, that that is a um, yeah. It, it, it must be a tense affair. Um, to be fair, she was kind of rooting for the Panthers late on. They, I think, more out of sympathy than anything because we were only we were two at that point. I think we were. I think we were two and fourteen or two and thirteen, whatever it was at that point. Uh, yeah, we were the worst team in the league. The Packers were looking good, headed to the playoffs. Um, Jordan Love had a pretty good year, and they took an early lead. Like we came back well uh, to get within a win of that game. Um, so yeah, I think as we were putting points on the board, I think she was thinking, like getting behind the Panthers, like uh, definitely out of sympathy. I, I didn't think she realistically thought that we could have won that game. Uh, but anytime we were scoring touchdowns, it was like, oh, they doing, yeah, doing really well. And then uh, even even towards the end, I think uh, she was disappointed that we didn't get that, uh, that 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 time stop as well. So yeah, I think she ended up being a, a, Pac- a Panthers fan towards the end of that game. But uh, yeah, our allegiances uh, certainly with the Packers. Absolutely. Um, week 13 is Dave Canola's bowl as you take mm. on the Buccaneers at home. Um, so yeah, this was a difficult one because we're playing them late as well. We're week 13 at home, 17 on the road. Um, I think all of these games can be split, uh, because like I said, neither one of the books, Falcons or Saints, I really think are great. Um, so I think we could quite easily end up three and three in this division. We we all could, <laughs> every single one of us could split these games. Like no one's going to run away with this. Um, so yeah, I'll probably split this one. Uh, first game I'll give to the Bucks. So we give a win. I'm guessing week seventeen then for the Buccaneers. Yeah, quite quite possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, so moving on to week fourteen, um, uh, you take on in Lincoln Financial Field. The Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, that's a loss. Yeah. Um, hopefully things go tits up a bit with the Eagles because I think there was a towards the back end of last year they were a little bit unsteady. Really, there weren't the the head coach kind of came under a little bit of fire. Uh, this was late in the season as well, week fourteen. We're getting right down to the nitty gritty here. So if things don't go well for the Eagles, uh, Sirianni could find himself fired. Um, depending on injuries, they might have some key guys out. Obviously, they've lost. Um, Jason Kelsey, Fletcher Cox. So there's a big change up in uh, Philadelphia. And if they lose the head coach as well, that could be some unrest. So that could be one to look out for uh, at the back end of the season. Uh, it obviously just depends on how it goes from like the, the first half of the season. If, they start, if they're winning games, uh, that, that, I think they're one of the best teams in the league. I think they're certainly one of the top five teams in the league for me, if it all gels together, if they play well. Um, but yeah, I think the Eagles could be a, a bit in the grey this season. Like, I don't think they could be as good as they've been in previous years, uh, but should still be definitely uh, good enough to beat us. Well, you mentioned then, I actually saw a uh, thing on my sleeper app not long before we started recording this about Eagles. And of course, we all know what happened last season. Uh, was it 11 and 1 at one point? And then they had a terrible run at the end of the season. But as per at DM Rossini, Eagles QB Jaden Hurts and head coach Nick Sirianni's relationship is still a work in progress. Now that could mean anything. That could mean yeah. But I think with the way it ended last season, I think the Super Bowl appearance probably gives them a bit of bit of leeway. Mm-hmm. But I do think that um, it, we've seen bigger shocks if he got if he got fi- then then what would happen if he got fired? I think um, if there's something going on behind the scenes between them two and they're not falling out, and they're not getting on even and they are falling out. I do feel like you're most likely to get rid of the coach. Over the quarterback, yeah, I mean, this yeah. is absolutely god awful, and it's you know it's a terrible season for him. Then maybe he might be the one to get traded away. But I could think... be playing Kenny Pickett. Oh, can you imagine that? That'd be yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they can win a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. I think they can win one with Kenny Pickett. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, week fifteen is against the Dallas Cowboys at home. Yeah, that's another tough game. Don't like uh, the matchup against the Cowboys at all. So I feel like unfortunately that's going to be a big loss. Yeah, that is was bad. last year. I think sure, I can't remember what. Let me see the score. Um, 33 10 last year in week 11, we got beat. Um, so yeah, I, I could see that being similar. <laughs> um, so your final game before Christmas, it is at um, 6 pm in the UK on December 22nd, um, at home to the Arizona Cardinals. This should be one of the ones that we're looking to win. Uh, as I said before, I think the Cardinals were kind of looking to be at least the 2023 Cardinals, if not better. 
Um, I think we've already got four wins so far, which is what the, the Cardinals had last year. Um, but yeah, with Marvin Harrison Jr., as I said before, I think the progression with uh, Jonathan Gannon, if Kyle has fit, because um, they, they got another one, Darius Robinson, he was like 18th or something overall, so I had two first-round picks. Um, yeah, they're, they're, a, they're a good team. They're, they're, they're a fine team uh, if they get going, if Marvin Harrison Jr. starts, uh, starts running well. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. This could be another one of them close games where if we play well on offense, the result's the result. It doesn't really matter, but I think this could be a Cardinals win. Okay, so that means going into week 17, you're currently 4 and 11. Um, in fact, my, my bat is completely. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is 4 and 11 going into your week 17 game. We mentioned it before. That, that was actually, by the way, that was your final home game of the season. That was in week 16. So you got two road games to finish the year. Uh, first against, yeah, against the Buccaneers at Raymond James. Yeah, th- I think this one could be a win if it's not the other one. Uh, I, I think these could easily be split. So, yeah, I give the win in week 13 to Tampa Bay. Um, yeah, we've gone on a bit of a, a losing record there since Munich because uh, of some tough teams, uh, Chiefs, Bucks, Eagles, Cowboys, Cardinals. If we lose all of them, 4-11, and 11, we'll be looking for one final push towards the end of the season. So, yeah, I'll give us the win here. Okay, and then going into week 18 to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, win uh, another split. I give it, I give them the win uh, at Bank of America in week six. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can go there and and finish quite well. Six and eleven record. I would take that. I think that's a fine record for us to go into. Uh, six wins is more than acceptable. It's one win than Matt Rule managed in his two years as a head coach. I think he went uh, five and it was five and eleven his first year because his first year was the sixteen game schedule. So then it was five and twelve. Um, so yeah, two five win seasons, which was fireable among the majority of Panthers fans. Um, so if if Dave Canales can come in and do one better than that in his first year, that's fine. Especially after only two wins, that's treble the wins from twenty twenty three. That's that's fine, absolutely fine. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that as you said before, you're not expecting to make the playoffs. I think just it's making that transition. You know, first year for head coach as a head coach at all. First year, first year ever as a head coach. You've got Bryce Young in his second season. Um, you've got Young receiver and Leggett, um, other players here and there. But I think, yeah, I think it's all about progression. And I think that would be a sign of a good season. Uh, but that is where we will end the podcast for today. So once again, huge thank you to Keg for coming on today. Always a pleasure having you on. Yeah, always a pleasure to come on. Appreciate it. Anytime I get the invite, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we'll have you on again, I'm sure, during the season long as we Good to see how the Panthers do. And of course, if you haven't already followed him, you can see those watching on YouTube, you can see on the on the on the video Keg's handle uh, and also both both his Twitter handles. Um so yeah, Keg TMC, but also the Panthers Magpie, if you are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um so do give him a follow um for all Newcastle and Panthers related content and also the Mag- the Magpie channel, which is a Newcastle United based uh, podcast. So yeah, do check it out. But in the meantime, this has been the Across the Pod NFL podcast with your host, Annie Davis. This has been Keg, and we'll see you guys on next season season, which should be Seattle season.